No, 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 no! That was literally me two weeks ago when I heard about these changes that the SOA is making to their pathway to become an associate of the Society of Actuaries. I literally had a temper tantrum in my head, of course. <laughs> but now that I've looked at these changes, they're actually not so bad, I guess. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the four major changes that the SOA announced to their pathway to becoming an associate of the Society of Actuaries. And the good news here is that if you are affected by any of them, it's probably only going to be one of them. So I guess we can take that as a positive here. In this video, I'll be breaking down three of the four major changes. I'll save the last change for next week's video. We'll be talking about the timing and I'll be giving my advice on what you should do depending on what your situation is right now. Okay, so now on the left-hand side of the screen, I have put a list of the requirements that the SOA currently has that you need to meet in order to become an associate of the Society of Actuaries. As you can see, there's exam P, FM, IFM, SRM, STAM, LTAM, PA, FAP, ACP, and then the VEEs, which are actually usually completed throughout this whole process. So the VEEs don't technically have to be at the end, but other than that, this is really the exam path that the Society of Actuaries currently recommends. Now, each of the orange boxes are the ones that are actually going to change as a result of these updates that the Society of Actuaries is making. So we will talk about each of those in today's video. Okay, so are you ready? Let's get into change number one. Now this change has to do with exam P and FM. And it's actually the smallest of the four changes, I would say. What is happening here is that the Society of Actuaries is actually going to reduce the amount of material that is tested on exam P and FM. They're going to be eliminating some material that is no longer relevant for later exams and is a bit outdated. And that means that it's going to take you less time to prepare for those exams. Currently, exam P and FM are three hour multiple choice exams, and that is not going to change. So even though there's going to be less material tested on these exams, the length of the exam is going to remain the same. They'll continue to be offered on alternating months. So exam P will be offered in January, March, May, July, etc., And exam FM will be offered in February, April, June, etc. Now, the timing of this change is not known right now. The SOA still has to work with Prometric, which is the testing company that does the CBT or the computer-based testing for the SOA. So they have to work with Prometric to get some kinks figured out and all that sort of stuff. They also want to make sure that the integrity of the instant results is kept up to par. So right now, when you take exam P or FM, you will get your result instantly. And that result is very accurate. It's not the official result. It rarely changes though, so it's very accurate. And the SOA wants to make sure that that standard is kept up. So that's why it's going to take some time to implement these changes and make sure testing goes well. Right now, the SOA has a syllabus posted up until the end of November, 2020 for exam P and FM. So I would say that the earliest these changes will happen is in December of 2021, but I highly suspect that these changes will be later than December, 2021. Now, here's my advice for those those of you that are either considering taking exam P or FM or maybe have already taken one. You might be wondering right now, should you delay taking these exams because they're going to be easier and less to study for in the future? My suggestion is absolutely not. Right now, we don't know when these changes are actually going to go into effect. So it could be a year from now and that means you would be delaying your actuarial career by a year just waiting for these exams. And again, a year might be short, it might be long, I don't know right now and neither does the SOA. I would just go ahead, take those exams, even though you are going to have to study some material that may not be tested later on. Plus, just so you know, if you pass exam P or FM now, it's still going to give you credit for exam P or FM in the future. It's not that if you pass it now, your credit is going to become useless or anything like that. It will still give you credit for exam P and FM in the future. So there's no harm in taking the exams now. I also wanted to share my thoughts on each of these changes in this video. So for this one, I kind of think it's a good and a bad thing. It's good in the sense that for you guys, you're going to have less to study for. You're going to be able to pass these exams quicker. But on the downside, I actually feel like it might be a little detrimental because you're not going to be preparing yourself for the amount of studying and material that you have to know for future exams. Future exams, as far as I have learned from the SOA, they're not going to have a reduced amount of material like exam P and FMR. So that means you're going 
going to jump now from just a little bit of material to huge amounts of material on later exams. And I think it just might be hard to adjust to that. So there are pros and cons with this one for me. Okay, now let's get into change number two. This one is a big one. Exam IFM, the third actuarial exam, is going to be completely removed from the associateship requirements. So this exam actually is going to be replaced by a different exam, but first let me explain to you why they're making this change. IFM right now currently focuses a lot on the financial mathematics involved with actuarial work. And apparently the SOA has talked to different employers and has determined that actually employers typically desire candidates that have more of an analytical knowledge versus a financial knowledge. So the SOA has decided to remove the IFM exam because it focused so much on the financial side and they decided to replace it with an exam that focuses more on the analytical side. So this new exam is going to be called the Advanced Topics in Predictive Analytics exam or the ATP exam and I'm just going to call it the ATPA exam because well I haven't heard how other people are going to say it so I'm just making this up. The ATPA exam is going to be the new replacement for IFM and like I said it's going to test more of the predictive analytics or the analytical side of actuarial work versus the financial side. Now this new exam is going to be module based it sounds like. So that means you're not going to have a whole bunch of study material that you have to go through and memorize and learn and practice and then take an exam. Instead what you're going to have to do is go through several modules and then there'll be a final assessment at the end of those modules that you'll have to pass. So that means you'll be able to complete this exam entirely from your own home and on your own timeline. Okay so let's look at the timeline for this change. So IFM will continue to be available all the way until November of 2022. That means that you are going to have time to pass exam IFM if you would like to. But you don't have to pass IFM if you would rather pass the ATPA exam. You can really choose which of those you want to take and either of them will go towards your ASA designation. That means that if you are someone that has already started studying for exam IFM or you really want to just get that exam out of the way, then you will still be able to pass it for the rest of this year and all the way until the end of next year. However, if you want to take this new ATPA exam, then you will be able to register for the modules starting in January of 2022, and then you'll be able to take the very first assessment, which will be available in June of 2022. So as you can see here in the timeline, effective November 2022, IFM will no longer be available, and your only option will be to take the ATPA exam. Another reason you might choose to take IFM is if you are someone that is more interested in the financial side of actuarial math versus the predictive analytics side of actuarial work. So if you are someone that likes the financials, then you might want to actually take IFM because it does focus more on financial math. Whereas if you are someone that is more interested in the analytical side, the ATPA exam is probably going to be the best choice for you. Now here's some advice for you. I was once in a situation where the exam I was going to take changed fairly drastically. It used to be all multiple choice, but then the SOA switched it to half multiple choice and half written answer. So when I took this exam, there was basically no support online for the written answer portion of this exam. And that made it really hard to get support and help online because no one else knew what to expect on this written answer portion of the exam. So from then on, I always recommend that if you can take the old exam that has been around for years because it's probably going to have more support for you online. I know when I was studying for exams, I would often Google different questions. I'd find forum answers and support online of other people struggling with the same problems. And that's just not available for a new exam because no one else has taken it. So I would recommend in this situation, if you can take IFM instead of the ATPA exam, because there's just going to be so much more support and help for you online until the ATPA exam is more established. Okay, now my thoughts on this change. Actually, I really like this change because because first of all, it means that the exam process is more in line with what employers are really looking for. I mentioned that financial math is not a skill that employers find as desirable as the analytical side of actuarial work. So it's a big plus that the SOA is actually making changes to the exam system so that you get more experience with the analytical side that employers want. And another good thing for you is that from my experience, the take home assessments and the module based exams tend to be a little 
little bit easier than the regular exams where you have to study and then go to a test room and take an exam. I'm just saying, it might be a little bit easier. Okay, so if you are someone that has been maybe considering the Casualty Actuarial Society route instead of the SOA route, then right now you might be wondering what's going to happen with their exams. Right now, the SOA's exam P, FM, and IFM are all exams that you need to pass in order to achieve the ACAS designation, or in other words, become an associate of the Casualty Actuarial Society. I'm not really sure what impact these SOA changes will have on the CAS route. And if I do learn anything, I'll definitely keep you posted. I'll make a video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to get any updates on that. Okay, it is time to get into change number three, but before we get into that, would you please give this video a thumbs up if you are finding it helpful so far? Whenever you give a thumbs up to one of my videos, it helps it spread to so many other people, and I just want to help as many aspiring actuaries as possible, so I greatly appreciate that. Okay, so the third change that is happening is that STAM and LTAM, which are two exams in the current SOA pathway, are going to be completely removed and replaced with two different requirements. STAM and and LTAM will be replaced with requirement number one, which is to pass either the A LTAM exam or the A STAM exam. So both of these exams are separate exams and you're going to be able to choose which one you want to take based on your interests or maybe where you're working at the time that you take these exams. So that's going to be the first requirement. The second requirement is to pass exam FAM, which stands for the Fundamentals of Actuarial Mathematics. So as you can see on the screen, right now, the FAM exam is something that every single person is going to have to get credit for, whereas the A STAM and the AL TAM exams you're going to have the option for. So not everyone will have to pass each of those exams. You'll only have to choose one. This change is happening as of summer 2022. That's when STAM and L TAM will officially go away. So let's talk about transition rules. What is going to happen with any current credits you have for exam L TAM or STAM? So if you have passed LTAM, that means you're going to get credit for the ALTAM exam, plus you're going to get credit for half of the FAM exam. They're calling this half the FAM L exam because it corresponds to the material on the LTAM exam. So basically, if you've passed LTAM, you're gonna get credit for one whole exam and half of the FAM exam. If you have passed the STAM exam, then you're going to get credit for the A STAM exam and the other half of the FAM exam, the FAM S portion. Now it probably goes without saying that if you have passed LTAM and STAM then you're going to have credit for all three of these exams. You'll have credit for A LTAM, A STAM, and the full FAM exam. But if you have not passed STAM or LTAM then you will not have credit for any of these exams and you'll have to pass all of them. The thing to note here is that if you have not got credit for half of the FAM exam by the time summer 2022 comes around then you will not be able to take half of the FAM exam. You'll only be able to take half of the FAM exam if you've already gotten credit for the other half of the exam. Everyone that hasn't gotten credit for any of the FAM exam will have to take the full exam and pass it. I know that's a little confusing. If you have questions about it, please feel free to ask down in the comments. I will happily answer your questions and clear things up. Okay, so now let's look at the timeline for these changes. It gets a little complex. So LTAM and STAM are going to continue to be offered all the way up to spring and summer of 2022. That may seem a bit far away right now, but it means that there are only really two more sittings remaining. Then at the time when LTAM and STAM go away, the ALTAM and the ASTAM are going to become available. So you'll be able to start taking those exams. Then in October of 2022, the FAM exam will officially become available. Now it's important to note here that as you can see on the screen, the FAM L and the FAM S exam are only going going to be available for a two year period. That means that if you don't get the credits you need for FAM L or FAM S prior to June of 2024, then you will not be able to get those half credits anymore. You will have to take the whole exam FAM. So for example, if we go back to this chart where I showed you what happens if you pass exam STAM, then as you can see, for exam STAM, you're going to get credit for the A STAM exam and the FAM S portion of the FAM exam. However, 
However, if you do not pass the FAML portion of the FAM exam prior to June of 2024, it means that you will no longer be able to get that credit. Instead, you'll just have to take the full FAM exam and your half credit, your FAM S credit will completely disappear. Okay, so here's my advice for those of you that are struggling with the STAM LTAM situation. If you are someone that has already started studying for one of these exams, then I would recommend that you keep trying to pass that exam until it goes away in summer of 2022. So there will be two more opportunities. One will be in the fall of this year and one will be in the spring summer of next year. So hopefully you will be able to pass them before that time frame. If you are someone that has not started studying for either of those exams, then I'm probably going to recommend you do not start because it's too late to start studying for the fall exam coming up and that means you're only really going to have one more opportunity to pass it in the spring or summer of next year and that really doesn't give you much options if you fail. So I would recommend you just do not start studying for either of those exams if you haven't already. Instead what you could do is start studying for the PA exam or the SRM exam. Both of those are completely unchanged after this update from the SOA. Okay so my thoughts on this change is that I'm pretty indifferent. It seems like they're going to be testing fairly similar concepts as were previously tested so that's good. The other thing is that it's going to be a little bit less exam time for you. So with the current system LTAM and STAM would take about seven and a half hours of exam time whereas now with the new exam system it's only going to be about six and a half hours of exam time total for these exams. Another good thing is that by the time you take these exams you're probably going to be already working so you'll be able to decide which exam to take either the ALTAM or the ASTAM exam depending on what field you're working with. So if you are someone that is in health insurance for example then you're probably going to take the advanced short-term actuarial mathematics exam the ASTAM exam whereas if you're someone that ends up working in life insurance then you're probably going to take the advanced long-term actuarial mathematics exam because these two exams are separated by the short-term and long-term nature of the insurance that you're providing it's going to make it easy for you to decide which one to take once you actually start working. Okay so the fourth major change has to do with the FAP modules but there's a lot going on with this. There are modules changing around, there are micro credentials coming too. So I'm going to explain all of that in next week's video so make sure you are subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications and make sure you like this video to give yourself the best chance of getting notified when that video comes up next Tuesday. Okay so there were a lot of changes here. What do you think about them? I would love to know down below in the comments. Also let me know if you have any questions. I will be answering as many of them as I can in the comments. I forgot to mention that the SOA anticipates that it's going to take less or equal amount of time to achieve the ASA designation now with these new changes. But it's important to remember that exams are not everything. There are other things that actuarial employers really want and are looking for in great actuarial candidates. So if you want to know more about what those requirements are, make sure you check out the video I did about one and a half months ago that's all about my study of 100 entry-level actuarial positions. In that video I share with you my crazy findings about what actuarial employers are really looking for in entry-level candidates and I promise you it is much more than just exams. So make sure you go check that out. I will put it right here. I will link it down below in the description. And that is all for this week's video. I will see you next Tuesday for more updates from the SOA. Bye for now!